There are times when I get a compliment, I just wish I could say thank you. However, what happens most of the time is when I get a compliment, my insecure brain tells me that I am not worthy of this compliment and I need to make some sort of jokey comment to undercut and undermine the original compliment. For instance, I was walking with my then girlfriend Jade in a botanical garden. Jade is uh, one of my favorite people. And as we were walking, our conversation led to a point where I could organically pose the question, what words would you use to describe me? To which this woman, who loves, likes, and respects me, uh, without much thought, said, kind, clever, compassionate. Now, I loved all of those, and I hold them to a very high premium. However, my brain immediately told me that I am undeserving of these compliments, and I need to make a jokey comment. And because she is right, because I am quite clever, I picked up on the alliterative pattern of the cuss sound. So when she said, kind, clever, compassionate, over top, I said, courageous. And without looking at me missing a beat, she goes, no. <laughs> and I stopped at my tracks and I said, wait, you don't think I'm courageous? Suddenly my brain thinks I am well-deserving with this compliment. <laughs> and she goes, eh. And I said, I think your noise just answered my question. And then we started to discuss exactly what courage is and what the actual definition is for our, uh, our talk, which was being scared but doing it anyway. And as she and I debated back and forth, I came to realize that she was absolutely right. Over the last few years, I had played it safe and I had put off inevitabilities. And I had not shown courage in a very long time. And it sucked to find that out when I should have just said thank you. About a year later, at uh, 5 a.m. on November 8th, 2020, I was sitting on my couch. Or, to put it another way with a timestamp that has nothing to do with this story, 17 hours after Rudy Giuliani gave his ill-fated and hilarious Four Seasons Total Landscaping press conference, I was sitting on my couch. And I was not having a good morning. I'm going to be very vulnerable for the next uh, couple uh, seconds, but... At that point in my life, I always had a low simmer of self-hatred. However, there was that point that morning where I was dealing with a lot of things and a lot of stuff was coming on me. And emotions are like farts in that you can suppress them all you want, but they're eventually going to find their way out. <laughs> and that morning, everything I had ever suppressed started coming out. And... And at that point, I found myself with this dark, dark thought where I went to a choice. I had been in pain for a long time, but I, I mean, I had dealt with my mental health issues for a very long time. I had done everything I possibly could, including one, denial, two, avoidance, three, end of list. <laughs> and that morning, I had the choice where I said, I can either be done and all this pain goes away, or I can deal with it, which is infinitely harder than that. However, I do not want to be remembered as that, so I decided that I needed to deal with it, which meant I had to admit some things to myself and to people I care about. So I walked into the kitchen with tears in my eyes. I said to Jade, I am in so much pain, and I need help. And Jade, who I still hold in the highest regard, put her coffee down and she came over and hugged me. And she promised that she would help me. And she said she, everything that she eventually did was she got me set up with a PHP program, which is a partial hospitalization program, where I was going to go and I was going to deal with a lot of stuff that I had never quite dealt with. And all I had to do was talk to an intake nurse the next day and I would be in that program. And then as Jade and I are in that kitchen, hold, and she's holding me, and I am just sobbing. She says to lighten the mood, I find it very attractive when a man can admit he needs help. And because my brain felt undeserving, I immediately responded through snot and tears that I'm sorry I'm so fucking hot. <laughs> The next morning, I woke up, and my first thought was, I'm fine, <laughs> whatever. What a bad day I had yesterday. 
But then Jade reminded me, and I admitted that I was just scared. I didn't know what I was about to walk into. But I went in to deal with it, and I went into my bedroom, closed the door, and I dialed the number of the intake nurse. And right as it started to ring, I said out loud to no one, here we go. And then for the next 65 minutes, I spoke to a very kind woman and told her everything that was going on in my head and had been going on for a long time and the things that I needed to deal with, things I had never told anyone else. And it was absolutely freeing when I did it, even though I was so very scared. And at the end of our conversation, she said to me, thank you for telling me all that and talking with me. And what you are doing takes a lot of courage. And right then, my brain, <laughs> as opposed to saying a jokey comment, just said thank you. <laughs>